Welcome to the Awakening Podcast Network. Get ready for an inspiring audio from this cutting-edge voice. You can find more podcasts at awakeningpodcasts.com. A reset of the prophetic movement is upon us. The second wave of prophets is rising in this hour. We stand at the edge of a new era in the prophetic. We're gathering the international prophetic community at the Global Prophetic Center, a hub for prophetic training, prophetic labs, summits, networks, and lighthouses. It's time for prophets to go deeper. It's time for seers to soar. It's time for prophetic voices to rise up and decree what says the Spirit of God with accuracy that causes the world to pay attention. The Global Prophetic Center offers proven prophetic systems and structures to equip you to walk worthy of your calling and to prophesy with precision, boldness, diplomacy, and wisdom. Get hands-on training and mentoring in a safe environment that breeds true prophetic community and learning. Receive impartation and activation. Sharpen your gift and avoid prophetic pitfalls. Get commissioned. Get networked. Get sent out with the word of the Lord in your mouth and the confidence to release it. Begin your journey today by applying at globalpropheticcenter.com. Jennifer LeClaire here. You can see in the spirit. I want to invite you to take the Seer Activation Challenge. 30 days to clearer spiritual sight. I'm going to be on board doing Seer Activations with you, guiding you through biblical entryways and much, much more. You can opt to take the Seer Activation Challenge at tinyurl.com slash Seer Activation tinyurl.com slash seer activation. You can also opt to get these three books, Seer Dimensions. You can get Power Seers. This just came out. Keys to Upgrading Your Prophetic Vision. And you can get Seer Activations with 101 Seer Activations and a whole lot more teaching. I want to challenge you to see what you've never seen before. God wants you to be able to see in the Spirit. Open your eyes to the Seer Dimensions in Jesus' name. Hello, and welcome to Women on the Rise, all you women on the rise. And we're so glad you're here with us today. My name is Michelle Burkett, and the co-host is usually with Patricia King. But today we have a special treat. We have Tasha Hale sitting in for Patricia King. And Tasha is really a forerunner in her generation. She's a member of the Women in Ministry Network. And I, I have a thing in me where I just really want what is inside of Tasha to be heard by more than uh, just a few. So, <laughs> so even at that, if you would, if you would share this, uh, this video, if you would, um, you know, post it to your sites and other sites, let's get as many people who can hear Women on the Rise shows as we can. Thank you for sharing. Now, Tasha, as I said, she's a forerunner in her generation and she has got, uh, just such a good word inside of her that when she speaks, it really, it sets people ablaze. And there's a passion that is in her and a studiousness of the word that I so appreciate about Tasha. And I uh, was saying to her earlier today, I was saying that it's like there is just bread on every shelf of your life. So Tasha, thank you for coming and giving us a piece of that bread today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate (laughs) it. Yeah. Now, you know, one of the things that you have really been pursuing and have been passionate about is um, being at his feet, yeah. the intimacy. Mm-hmm. And you have done some beautiful study on Mary and Martha yeah. and the differences in the relationship that each of them had with Jesus, neither one of them being wrong. Right, right. But talk to us about what you're seeing in that. Yeah, I mean... I've always had a passion for, you know, intimacy and just relationship with God, mainly because of 
all the stuff that I feel like I've had to walk through in my life, you know, and seeing the value and importance of, of walking, you know, with God, close to God, mm-hmm. laying my life at his feet, you know, I'm just really realizing when I step away from that place, like how things are off in my life and, you know, and certain things like that, you know, where I'm just like, I know that I'm not giving him my all at this moment, you know, and just kind of walking that in my lifetime, you know, and just seeing the difference of that, you know, and, you know, doing a lot like Martha did, you know, when she welcomed Jesus into her home, you know, she absolutely welcomed him him into her home, but she was distracted by, you know, the serving and doing, not that she was, like we said, not that she was wrong in what she was doing, but the mere fact that she was distracted. And then it goes on to say that, you know, Mary was listening. She was hearing what Jesus was. She was at his his feet, Mm -hmm. listening and hearing. Mm -hmm. And if you look up that word listening or, you know, to hear in the Greek, it means to comprehend, to understand what he's saying. Mm -hmm. You know, like I was sharing, you know, the story about my, you know, five-year-old little boy, you know, there's oftentimes I tell him, you know, you know, hey baby, can you go and put on your pajamas? And he's distracted by doing stuff, you know, (laughs) and And then he just sits there, you know, Mm. and I look at him again and I say, did you hear me? Did you comprehend what I'm saying? Mm. Did you understand what I'm saying? And I see that so much in that whole situation with, you know, Mary and Martha, like Jesus, like really giving his heart, Mm. laying it all out there. And one being distracted by things, probably hearing him, but probably not comprehending and understanding what he's saying. And you see, you know, Mary, and he's like, you know, Martha's just like, come on, you know, like, why isn't she helping me out? Of course, that's obviously not how she says it, but, you know, how I don't come, know. I think she might she have been pretty a little, frustrated. She, she probably was a little snooty, you know? I mean, it kind of looks like that, you know? And, uh, and she, you know, she's just frustrated. Sure. You know, and I just see where, you know, Jesus looks at her and he's like, man, if mm. only you would understand what Mary is giving to me, Mm -hmm. what she is laying before me, Mm -hmm. you know, even though I'm feeding and giving to her, like what she's feeding and giving to me Mm -hmm. is the better thing, you know? And I just really appreciate that, you know, contrast there because I think it's so easy for us, especially us as women, you know, we can get so distracted even with home life and Mm -hmm. all of that, you know, or even work life or ministry. Ministry. Yeah, sure. ministry, you know. Those are great things mm-hmm. and those are God things and those are things that, you know, God so desires from us. Mm-hmm. But are we neglecting being at his feet? Mm-hmm. Are we neglecting to hear and to comprehend what he's saying, what he's doing in that time? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, there's so many, you know, different things that you can see in Mary's life, you know, even the fact that she anointed his feet, Mm -hmm. you know, and looking further into that, you see where, you know, anointing feet was common back in the day, Mm -hmm. but to anoint with such a fragrant oil Mm -hmm. was costly, but to many thought was a waste, Mm -hmm. you know, but to her, it was everything because she wanted to give it all. She had already given yeah. everything in her heart. Right. So the oil was, was just a physical manifestation mm-hmm. of what had already happened right. in her heart. She just wanted yeah. him to know, like, yeah. you've got me. Yeah. You've got all of me. And yeah. she didn't care. Mm-hmm. She didn't care what was going on around yeah, her. her. That represented she, her future. Right. That oil. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and even the mere fact that it said, you know, you know, back in those days, it was, it was very, um, offensive for a woman to put down her hair, Mm. you know, and the fact that she didn't even care. Mm. I don't care if this offends anybody else. I just want Jesus Mm. to know that he has my all, Mm -hmm. that I'm in love with him and that I'm going to lay it all before him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lay it all out before him. And I want him to know, even though, of course, I mean, he knows her heart, but, Mm -hmm. and and he knows all of our heart, Mm -hmm. but the mere fact that she wanted everybody else to know, Mm -hmm. I want everyone to know that I love you and I will give it all for you, you know? And like you said, you know, 
She had given everything in her heart, but man doesn't always see the heart. They see the outward mm-hmm. appearance. And so oftentimes I think that God calls us to do radical things mm. because he wants those around us to know the love that we share in our heart for him. He wants those so that it will ignite those around us mm-hmm. to also passionately pursue living at his feet. It's beautiful. You know, in that, I'm also, I'm reminded of the Shulamite mm-hmm. in Song of Solomon. And the, the passionate love that she felt for her beloved. Mm-hmm. And often, others who look on, on that kind of love, that giving all kind of love, sometimes you're misunderstood. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there's jealousy that comes up. Uh, and, and others who are maybe in that place of, really still striving for something that they don't understand is actually already theirs, right? right? Because we are intimate with him. It's a matter of being in that place of comprehending the intimacy that we already have with Jesus. And, you know, it's, you know, when we talk about pressing in, you know, it's, it's, uh, sometimes there's this place that enters in of striving for that. And, and, you know, Mary wasn't doing any of that. The Shulamite wasn't doing any of that. Right. They were they were just beholding, beholding how beautiful and wonderful Jesus is. Yeah. And it's it's a matter of, you know, where am I putting my attention? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. it's as simple as just you know, instead of, you know, having all of my attentions going this way, mm-hmm. you know, like Mary and all the busyness of everything yeah. or Martha in the busyness of everything. Right. And I want to step back and say, Martha, as you said, invited her into her home. We've invited the Lord into our lives. Mm-hmm. We've invited him to live and, and be with us. And he's accepted that invitation. Yeah. And he loves being in our home. Uh, but what he loves is the being with us. Yeah. And it, it, he would... He would have been content to be having a picnic. We're in a hovel of some kind, yeah, you know. Absolutely. And again, Martha's heart wasn't bad. Right, Martha was trying to do the best that she could do yeah. for for the for Jesus being in her home. Yeah. She wanted to have everything just right for him. Yeah. But here's the place where she it it wasn't a wrong heart, but she missed the rest Mm -hmm. that came into her home Mm -hmm. when Jesus came into her home. Right. He wasn't looking for all of the accoutrement. Right. right? He he was, he was just after Martha. Right. He was just after Mary Mm -hmm. and he just wants to be with you. Right. And he is with you. It's not anything that you're having to strive after. Mm -hmm. It really is a matter of just saying, here I am. Yeah. Here I am, right. and I know that you are with me. Mm-hmm. Scripture says he is. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's, you know, let's hear from Patricia King on this. She has uh, spoken to us about the intimacy with Father, and I love where Patricia King comes from on this. It's so right and so true. Well, hello there. There are many things that can distract us in our lives. I mean, the world that we live in offers us so many options all the time. But sometimes it's really easy to just get so busy with all the options that Jesus goes on the back burner. And all of us can be in that place. But when we are brought to remember once again that just a minute, Jesus is the principal thing. He is, he is who we need. And I just want to encourage you as women to be like, you know, Mary of Bethany, of course, and other examples in the scripture where, where there was preparation of the heart for Jesus. I think of Esther who went through, you know, all the preparation to come before the king. That's kind of a picture of us just taking the time out and doing what we need to do to come before the king because he is so important. He is so vital. He is the very center of everything in our life and of, and of everything that expresses through our life. And so as women of God who are on the rise right now, the most important position for you is at the feet of Jesus. It's drinking of his goodness, drinking of his truth and of his word and filling yourself up with daily bread. Oh, it's so beautiful. And when you are, are close to him and intimate with him and, you know, a lot of times, 
you know, when you're spending time with God, you don't feel intimate, but you don't have to feel anything to be intimate. The truth is, is that God brought you into his heart. You are inside of him, and he is inside of you. And you just can't get any more intimate than that. And so it's a matter of realizing that you're already intimate and then letting your life unfold from that place without striving, without struggling, and without thinking that you have to have a whole lot of feelings. It's simply a position of believing in who you are in him. I remember one time I was striving so hard to just get close to God, to worship him. I wanted to worship, worship, worship. I was just struggling and striving so hard in my own strength. And he said, what are you trying to do? I'm just trying to be intimate, I said. He said, don't you know you already are? I am so intimate with you. I am in you. You are in me. You can't get any more intimate than that. So all of a sudden, I realized, okay, I don't have to try to worship to get close to God. I am close to God, and that's why I worship. And it changed everything, just that mental positioning. And so I hope that helps you, because God has great things for you as you connect with him, as you take that time apart and just being one with him, acknowledging that oneness. And he's going to unfold so much to you and empower you for so many things for your future. Oh, Patricia, thank you. That was so good. You know, the enemy really likes to do a number on us sometimes. Mm -hmm. And he says, oh, you've got to try harder or he'll put shame on us because, you know, well, you haven't read your Bible today. Mm -hmm. You know, what makes you think that, you know, you have intimacy with the Lord? And it's just such a lie. On the cross, Jesus said, it's finished. I have taken down that veil that separates Mm -hmm. anything that separates you from from the Father. Mm-hmm. It's gone. Right. And you come through me. Right. And so again, you know, being at his feet. Yeah. And and the pressing in and, and of just the putting your arms down mm-hmm. and saying, Here am I. Yeah. What you got for me? Right. You know? Absolutely. And again, I go back to the Shulamite with this. You know, mm-hmm. and one of my favorite scriptures is her saying, Where are you feeding your sheep today? Because that's where I want to be. Wherever you are, that's where I want to be. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think, you know, like you were saying, the complicating of the kingdom and intimacy. Yeah. You know, I think of uh, my, my husband and I and how our relationship flows Mm. so well, Mm -hmm. you know, but it took time. Mm -hmm. It took time. It took process. It took those those moments, those hard moments, mm-hmm. the walking through those moments, mm-hmm. the allowing God to be in the midst of it. That's good. You know, yeah. and so I feel like, you know, it's oftentimes so difficult for us because like you said, mm-hmm. we think, oh, I've got to be in a certain position. I've got to be, you know, in a certain place with the Lord. I have to be perfect mm-hmm. in order to be at his feet. And we do. We hold mm-hmm. this shame. We hold this guilt. Mm-hmm. And we find ourselves in a place where we go into the works mm-hmm. like Martha mm-hmm. because we feel ashamed to mm-hmm. go at his feet. Mm-hmm. And so God is okay with where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's amazing about this relationship (laughs) with God Mm. is he's okay with where you are, Mm. but he loves you too much to let you stay. And this is, I mean, from the person who's been serving God for 40 plus years to the person who maybe not know Jesus at this moment, Mm. it's for all of us. Mm. He wants to pull us higher. There's always a place for us to go deeper. Like, that's what I love about Jesus is that there's always a place for us to go deeper, you know? And just when we find that we've gotten so much richness from him (laughs) and so much love for him, he takes us deeper and he takes us higher, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I I love that about our relationship with God is it doesn't matter where we've Mm -hmm. been. That's right. It doesn't matter where we're at. It doesn't matter what situation you're facing at this moment. Mm -hmm. He sees you and he just wants you to come. He's just inviting you to come to his feet so that he can speak valuable things Mm -hmm. to you. The very things that you need to hear, he has. He has. And he's saying, it's all right in my Mm -hmm. hands. 
Don't seek what is to the left. Don't seek what is to the right. Come to my feet because everything that you need, everything that you desire, those very healings that you need, that affirmation that you need is in my hand. And I'm just inviting you to come to my feet so that I can breathe that life into you, so that I can challenge you, so that I can push you to be the very best you you can be. It's beautiful. And I, I, I'm loving the contrast, you know, between Mary and the Shulamite. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and at the, in the very first chapter, first, I think it's even in the first verse of Song of Solomon, she says, kiss me. Mm. And, you know, she's, she's already said, you know, hey, I've, I'm brown. I've been tending the vineyards. I'm, you know, I'm, I, I've, I, I'm not beautiful. Right. And, and she says to the beloved, though, kiss me. And that is an intimate act, but that word kiss, it's the same word of when God breathed life mm. into Adam. And when we just present ourselves in that place of, and, and, you know, as you're going through your day, you know, as you're, as, as you're at a desk, as you're driving in the car, whatever those, if you can just take that moment and turn your attention to him and just say, oh, kiss me and allow yourself to, to, um, no, even if you don't feel anything, right. he responds to you because scripture says that when you draw close to him, he's drawing close to you. Mm-hmm. He's always been there. Right. It's just that your attention is turned into, mm-hmm. to him. Yeah. And so he's like, oh, yes. And one glance in Song of Solomon says that you ravish his heart. Yeah. So in every moment that you would say to him, kiss me, mm-hmm. you're ravishing the heart of God. And through the Song of Solomon, as you were saying, you know, she starts out in a place of not really knowing who she is. Right. Um, she sees this beloved and she loves him, mm-hmm. but um, he has more for her. Right. But he knows every step along the way exactly where she is. Right. And there is never a shame right. in where Absolutely. she is. Yep. But he continues to extend his mm-hmm. hand and say, come up higher, come yeah. up higher, right. come up higher. Yes. And in the coming up higher by the end of mm-hmm. Song of Solomon, we see where she is dancing on the mountaintops with her beloved. Yeah. And there is the marriage right. between the two. Yeah. And now we're at spirit and bride yeah. saying Absolutely. come. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Being awakened. Yes. The you know, awakened. Awakened to yes. what he has, you know, and just allowing God to just come and speak to those things that have been dead, yeah. those things that have been dormant. Good. A lot of us have been Breathing in a place. Breathing life yes. into all of those places. Right. That's a lot right. of us have, you know, put ourselves in situations or have been in situations where we have focused in and we have believed that that's how God is. Mm. But it says that God is not man, mm-hmm. you know. And so how God wants to come and turn those things around. Like I really yeah. feel in my spirit that there's many of you out there who have had um, relationships that have, you know, they've kind of distorted your view and thought on who God is and mm. who Jesus is as your bridegroom. Mm. And maybe it was marriages, maybe it was uh, even previous, you know, past relationships. And you've found yourself in a place where you can't trust God. You can't trust Jesus mm. because you have focused so much on what man has done. Mm -hmm. And I just want to break that off of you right now in the name of Jesus. And I want to remind you that he is not man. He does not lie. Mm -hmm. And he is above anything that you could ever think or imagine. Mm -hmm. He is above all those things. And he wants to come and he wants to heal those very deep uh, woundedness because he wants to be your bridegroom. He wants to be your lover. He wants to have that relationship with you. He wants to have a communion with you that is is unlike anything you've ever experienced. So good. Yeah. And to add to that, he's not disappointed in you. Absolutely. He's not angry with you. Right. Right. Um, he's, you know, I, I, I say often, you know, when, when Jesus looks at you, he's not frowning. Right. Yes. You know? yes. His, 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 his eyes light up, his right. arms open up. It, it's sort of like, you know, when you come into a room and I believe every child that comes into a room, their parents' eyes need to just light up with delight yeah. that the child has entered in. Right. And his eyes do that. Yeah. They light yes. up. And, uh, you know, not, not to equate 
God to my dog at all. Right. <laughs> but let me just say, yeah. I really love it when I come home and my dog is so yeah. happy to see yeah. me. And again, not not in any way to, <laughs> to equate God to my dog because it's so much greater. Because right. you think about this, it is the creator of all things. The one who has given everything to mm-hmm. us. The one who loves us so deeply, yes. so completely. Mm-hmm. Who knows every single thing about me. Right. Even those things that I don't even know about myself right. yet, right? Every single thing, he knows it. And there is nothing in him that rejects you. Right. There is nothing in him that rejects you. Absolutely. In fact, everything in him is wooing you to mm-hmm. him and saying, come closer, come closer, mm-hmm. come closer. Amen. He adores you. Yeah. And so from that are places of praying, reading the word, yeah, attending meetings, tithing, right. fasting. Mm-hmm. They come then from that place of a response right. to that great love. Yes. It's it's us saying, oh, where are you feeding your sheep today? I want to be with you. I yeah. want to know more about you. I want to open up the love letter mm-hmm. and read what you've written to me yeah. about you and yeah. me. And just wanting to be with it. And wanting to be I with it. I think, him. you know, that's about it. my relationship. Not having to be. Right, right. But wanting. What a bummer. And that's, and that's yeah, and that's, that's true, right? <laughs> right? Like, a lot of us feel that it's a chore. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. It's a chore for me to have to sit down. And read my my word because it, I'm checking it off my list. Right, but that's not that's not what we want. That's mm-hmm. not that. If that's the case, then we mm-hmm. really have to examine our hearts. Are we doing like Martha, mm-hmm. and we're just mm-hmm. doing the service, or are we being like Mary because I'm so in love with Him? I mm-hmm. want to do this because I want to know and what you have to say and comprehend <laughs> yes. and understand. Having that go into your saying. heart, yes, yeah, absolutely. so good. So good, Tasha. Yeah. Thank you. We could talk about this oh, yeah, forever, for sure. right? <laughs> it's, it's one of my favorite subjects yes. for sure. And um, I so appreciate what you've brought to, to this today yeah, and you. being able to have this conversation with yeah. you and with you. Yes. <laughs> thank you for being with us. And I have a decree for you to go out on today. And it's, you are one with Christ. Mm-hmm. You are united to the Lord and are one spirit with him. You are chosen by God, holy and dearly loved. You are seated with Jesus in heavenly places, and his thoughts about you are more than the sands of the sea. He is completely smitten with you and rejoices over you with songs of joy and love. And he is undone by one glance by you. You have ravished his heart. Yeah. Oh, and you know, the more you're with him, the more your heart is really ravished by him. Mm -hmm. He's so good. He's so good. Uh, Just allow yourself to enter in even in a more deeper way with him. And again, it's not having to strive and and to try hard. It's just being and saying, kiss me. Yeah. (laughs) Being at his feet Mm -hmm. and listening. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us today. Women on the Rise. We'll see you next time. You have gifts. God expects you to use them. If you need training to school your gift, log on to schoolofthespirit.tv. You'll find training in spiritual warfare, prophetic ministry, prayer, seer's ministry, writing, and so much more. Go to schoolofthespirit.tv today. You want to go deeper? Get equipped to overcome and walk in God's purpose for your life at Awakening House of Prayer's online campus. You'll experience an online family, preaching, teaching, and prophetic impartation for victorious living. We have over a thousand members online hungry for what God is saying and doing in the earth. Visit ahop.online today and join our family. This has been a production of the Awakening Podcast Network. Jennifer LeClaire is the founder and owner of APN. Our heart is to inspire people and exalt Jesus with every broadcast. We're grateful for our advertisers and supporters that make these podcasts possible.